trap tree program um, to reduce most of the ailanthus trees uh, and then apply some systemic insecticides to some remaining trees in order to kill uh, larger amounts of uh, spotted lanternfly. Uh, so we'll get into that in a, in a second here, but uh, we're going to talk about controlling the tree of heaven. So I'm going to give you some examples uh, and some tips what to look for with tree of heaven, uh, as well as some control measures. Um, the tree of heaven tends to be uh, highly regenerated or will regenerate uh, very highly after you cut it. So uh, if you're going through your property, removing tree of heaven, uh, be prepared to apply some type of herbicide uh, treatment with that or you're going to have tons of shoots in the next spring or the upcoming season. Um, <clears throat> you know, they're very difficult con to control mechanically. You can with uh, high persistence by just constantly removing them, uh, but it is much easier coupled with some type of, of herbicide application. Generally something with triclopyr uh, or imazapyr, glyphosate, uh, you know, things of that nature, Roundup uh, for uh, an easier term. Um, several methods in which to do so. You could do the hack and squirt method. That is a preferred method uh, where you leave the tree standing uh, and apply in the, uh, the summer months, the later summer months, um, basically just using some downward hacks, uh, leaving some gaps in it to ensure that the, uh, that the herbicide can be taken up by the plant. The idea is for uh, the, the chemical to be applied, it takes it up through the, the, uh, the xylem of the tree and the phloem, uh, takes it down into the root system and kills the tree standing. Then you can do what you want with it after that. Either cut it up, uh, burn it if you will, uh, or chip it on site. Um, you know, the, there are other methods as well if you do not feel comfortable doing that. Obviously there are many other tree care professionals that are offering this type of control work as well. We can talk a little bit more about that towards the end. So what is Tree of Heaven? Uh, I've been saying Alanthus a lot, so that is a, a the scientific name of Tree of Heaven. Um, the leaves are a compound leaf, uh, they, uh, so they have a single stalk with several individual leaflets, generally 11 to 25. Uh, this is an example of a uh, Tree of Heaven. Um, I just grabbed this from the parking lot right outside here. You can find it nearly everywhere. Once you learn what uh, or, or notice some of the key characteristics of it, you're going to start to notice it everywhere. Uh, it isn't invasive, it, it likes to, uh, or it prefers disturbed areas and wood lines, uh, but it can grow nearly anywhere. It can grow nearly uh, to any size. Some of the trees that we were banning were about two feet in diameter, uh, but generally you tend to see them a little bit smaller. They have a smoother bark. Uh, you can see some of the, the, uh, the striations on the bark. It kind of looks like cantaloupe. Uh, and, and like I said, it's generally smooth, but I have seen some that uh, have a generally rough bark. Uh, one, Say that again? I'll pass it around if you would like. Um, one thing to look for on the Tree of Heaven, there are some lookalikes. Walnut looks like it. Now that has a much deeper furrowed bark and obviously will have walnuts on it. Um, sumac, staghorn sumac looks very similar as well. Now, staghorn sumac has uh, seed pods or those, those large red flowers on the top. Um, Alanthus does not. What Alanthus does have is uh, big papery husks and seed pods that look like this. So it kind of looks like, you know, they fall off and look just like uh, maple tree husks uh, or the Samara. Uh, so you can notice them, that would be a female tree. Uh, just keep that in mind for a little bit later. Uh, but one thing you notice on the tree of heaven is on the, the base of the leaf, uh, there's a little nodule. There's a tiny little nodule and you'll be able to see it once I pass it around, uh, but it's just a little uh, nodule on each individual leaflet. Uh, so that's an indication of it being Tree of Heaven. Uh, also, it leaves these leaf scars when you break off a, a leaf. Uh, it almost looks like a barn owl's face, in my opinion, or, or like a deeply furrowed heart uh, shape that you can notice it's generally a different color. When you break it off too, it really stinks. This one kind of smells a little bit, but uh, if you want, you can break it a little bit more. It has a really odd smell to it. Almost, some people explain it to be uh, um, similar to rotten peanut butter. Uh, or, or something that really smells sour. It doesn't smell uh, too plant-like. Uh, but here, feel free to take a look at this. Uh, I won't pass around the seed pods just because they'll, they'll be all over the floor here. Uh, but if you feel free to come up at the end and take a look at it then. Um, so the, the Tree of Heaven is essential for our trap tree program because that is the, the species that we are targeting. Because we know it is a, uh, a common tree that the lanternfly uh, tend to congregate on, especially this time of the year. 
Uh, so the trap tree program uh, in a nutshell. Let's pretend all of these trees here, all of the light green trees are uh, every other species in the forest while with the dark green, green trees there, I believe there's 11 of them, um, being Alanthus altissima or being the tree of heaven. Uh, so what, what we, would, we would want to do is remove most of the Alanthus trees, uh, leaving a few male trees to treat with systemic insecticides. So why do you think we'd want to leave male trees and take most of the female trees? Because of these right here. The more, the more female trees we, we remove, the, the more seed bank that we eliminate. So it prevents regeneration in that area. Because I said earlier, these things regenerate very easily. Uh, you see shoots and stumps, uh, stump shoots of them coming up all over the place in any type of disturbed area where any of them have been taken out and not coupled with uh, an herbicide application. So we would remove most of those trees. Uh, so we'll allow in this scenario here, leave three trees behind, uh, removing eight of the uh, other Alanthus trees. So then, theory would state that uh, most of your lanternfly are going to be attracted to those three trees rather than the 11 trees that were originally there. So we can um, apply a systemic insecticide to those trees, generally a dinotephrin or a midocloprid product. Um, there's a few other uh, product names. I believe they're on this management calendar. Penn State Extension also has some other uh, acceptable forms of systemic insecticides that are non-restricted use, meaning that any of you could go to uh, the store and buy them. You don't need a pesticide applicator's license. Uh, but we would treat these systemic, uh, these trees systemically uh, with this product and then any lantern fly to feed on that uh, would, would succumb to uh, that insecticide. Uh, this has been proven very effective uh, in areas where it has been done properly and, and done correctly. Uh, the idea behind it, uh, um, in theory, we are using fewer amount of pesticides to control the same amount of lanternfly. Uh, we've noticed that they prefer this, this tree of heaven, uh, so rather than them going to all 11 trees here in this area, they're going to be attracted to uh, far fewer because we've only allowed them three uh, behind. That's not saying they're going to feed on other trees, but it does seem that uh, they will visit this tree uh, quite often. So in areas where it's been done properly, I've seen thousands and thousands of dead lantern fly at the base of the trees. Uh, so this right now is the, uh, the preferred method. It's being performed by USDA, PDA, uh, and soon to be performed by uh, some of the county conservation districts. Uh, there's been some funding allotted to conservation districts uh, that we're working on right now uh, that will go into control efforts of uh, private property, uh, township and municipal property, uh, for, for areas throughout the uh, quarantine. Um, so I know Montgomery has applied for some, I know uh, Berks County has applied for some as well. Uh, and what's going to be done is, uh, is an attempt to control uh, some larger properties, especially the high risk properties with a lot of Atlantis and a lot of spotted lanternfly. Uh, so look in the upcoming year for uh, some of that funding to be potentially available.